How old were you? Were you like 15, 16? Started your own religion? 16, 17, what yeah. The fuck? It's legal in Texas? Yes. Would you like to take <laughs> it from here? I think that's right. fucking hilarious. So, <coughs> one summer, uh, me and my friend had watched this thing or this documentary about how religion is kind of screwed up and how the tax codes are kind of fucked up. So then we decided, okay, why don't we take advantage of this and make a religion so that way we can get a whole bunch of free shit and maybe get some money from it. (laughs) It's like one day we sat down and we were both... Such noble intentions. Oh my God. We were both drunk as shit, high as shit. We were just fucked up. And we started writing a Bible, a whole ass Bible. We wrote down... (laughs) We wrote down creeds for it. We had a whole fucking backstory. Like we were going to go into places and be like, Hey, here's why you should follow this religion. Or are you down on your luck? Well, we're here to help. <laughs> we weren't. We're pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but basically the religion is like wherever you're at in life is where you're supposed to be. It's where your spirit is supposed to be at. So like we had this whole backstory where like these little sprites of life just wanted to be something and so then they created it. So like each sprite of li- like one sprite of life was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to make the fucking earth." They became the earth. And then, like, a sprite of life was like, I want to become a fucking human. <laughs> He's a human. She's a human. It's a, I don't fucking it's a but human. <laughs> but, uh, so basically, it, it, it incorporates everybody. So, like, that way no one feels shitty about themselves. So, like, say, like, you're a fucking, like, you s- robbed a store. But then ours is like, hey, you robbed a store, but guess what? Where you're at in life is where you're supposed to be. That happened for a reason, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically faith. And so then you draw in on people's fucking insecurities, and they're like, you know what? I robbed that store, but hey, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you know? Is it so actually legal in Texas? Yeah. It's so filed in the state of Texas. It's called sanctism. Sanctism? Sanctism is like... Skanktism? <laughs> <laughs> so everything you just mentioned, it sounds like preventative focuses, like preventing future damage is there anything to reverse it is there any is there any natural or not natural is there any technological innovations that are able to convert carbon into oxygen or is there anything that could just take the amount of methane and the amount of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere like uh, like something other than trees that could do it at a much more rapid pace yeah um so there is uh um, carbon sequestration, and Bill Gates is investing in. Um, there's some several startups that are working on this. Wait, what did you just say? Bill Gates. No, no, the the carbon. It's called carbon sequestration, where you take carbon out of the atmosphere and then store it in the ground. That's called carbon capture and storage. But then when you sequester the carbon, what do you do with it? It's just carbon. No one wants some carbon. You can't. You know, you can't. Is there a it. way to solidify it? This might go back to my like terrible fucking understanding of what would that even be? Yeah, no, or just I mean, the I'm elements. Not, I'm not an expert of it by any means. Or maybe like uh, put it in something that's solid that's going to absorb it at a very like efficient rate, and then yeah. just fucking throw that in the ground. Um, yeah, that's that's what from my understanding that's what they're trying to do with carbon capture and storage. It's just expensive. Um, and it's difficult to do, but the price has gone down a lot, though. It used to be a lot more expensive. Now it's just expensive. <laughs> so progress. So we have made progress, that's for sure. I always wonder, like, if minds like Isaac Newton never came around, would we have inevitably figured out some of these things over time? Would another person come along? Or Because we're kind of building off of everything in terms of creativity, in terms of sports. Like, sports are only improving, mm-hmm. and people look up to other people, and they – admire them and then they kind of mimic them in terms of science like would we have come up with these mathematical theories Mm -hmm. or explanations to the natural world without particular minds like isaac newton or like how much further would progress be behind if we didn't have some of these incredible minds like the isaac newtons the einsteins the galileos yeah well it depends on how metaphysical you are in that respect because a lot of, I mean, some theorists believe that, like, we're all connected and we all share the same, like, they think that, like, ideas are in a pool, right? 
and like ideas the collective unconscious almost yeah and like some minds are able to grab those ideas and take them down like isaac newton was creating calculus as the same time as a german scientist was creating calculus and like thomas really? yeah thomas edison was creating like electricity and like well enhancing electricity and like creating the light bulb at the same time nikola tesla was doing his arc work so like they think that ideas come around at the same time and that like sometimes multiple people will get the same idea is that just because of the point of progress like that's the new problem that's emerging with our like limited resources or or are they like hypothesizing that they're kind of drawing from the ether like taking from yeah. the ether of the collective unconscious and that's the, s- the second one they think that there's Fuck. like they think that there's like a collective conscious and like they're drawing from that and that we all like like we're all like born with that same conscious it's just like how deep do we go into it you know what i'm saying just punching on the thing at like 80 percent build up to like 20 30 40 minutes uh-huh. and then once i just had like a year of like repetitions of punching this bag over and over i again. wouldn't do it on your own that's just my advice i would i would <laughs> i would get some guidance first and really pay attention to what they're saying yeah I and then learn how to throw a punch learn all the different punches and don't you feel like there's part of you that's the like footwork especially I and feel some, like it's some drills don't you think though no i don't think it is at all i think it's definitely instinctual bro like if you ever like i mean like there's definitely techniques and shit, but like I feel like there's like a natural athletic ability to like everything. It's being like y- well, you yeah, find yeah, people yeah. who are like athletic at one sport, they tend to be good at just all around like athletics. A lot of times, people the athleticism just, is definitely important, but you're you're like, gonna want to learn some techniques, especially for sure. The, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, it's always smart like to you know. But yeah, yeah, your athleticism. I mean, you're gonna have cardio I'm over somebody who eats McDonald's you. every day. You're gonna have that cardio for sure. But also, I'll tell you this. It's, <laughs> work like lifting weights and um, running and playing soccer or whatever it is. It's oh, a yeah. very very different workout than boxing. It's very different. Yeah. Boxing is like full body and you're standing pretty much in the exact same spot, but it works you man. It works you like a dog. Like yeah, I mean I think within about two it, like, three minutes rope, if you're like going hard, you are going to be exhausted. Yeah. Jumping rope is probably the most comparable, which is why jumping yeah. rope is so common in boxing. Yeah, I think the jump rope, Brett Favre's number one uh, training modality, apparently, that he recommends to anyone is the jump rope. He said that was his, th- through his whole career. He played until he was old and was obese. It makes sense, dude. It's like, just like, just that bounce, just to have that, like, train that bounce. That's what they tell a lot of NFL quarterbacks. It's ballet and jumping rope are, like, the two counterintuitive yeah. things, which makes sense to be light on your feet and whatnot. But you yeah. never guess that, you know. You never guess that. I don't know. I feel like ballet. I feel like it's not surprising at all. I feel like the things like when I was a kid playing soccer, like I would have been like dancing, <laughs> or gay or something. I don't know. Like I don't know. But now I fucking love dancing, dude. Like I realize, like damn, dude. Like I can dance like a motherfucker. Like you know, this footwork from soccer or whatever. But like. That, that kind I of think I enjoyed what being other shitty thing? at dancing and just not caring. You know, just know everybody look is looking at you and you're just like, you're just getting after it. And you're like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't <laughs> give, I don't care what you guys are saying. What was the other one? Dancing? What was the other? Or ballet? And what was the ballet other one? and jumping rope? Oh yeah, for that's, sure. That's for like sure, jumping rope is like a daily like habit. Like, um, pharmaceutical companies, people who run them, most likely sociopaths, most likely. Very intelligent people. So if you had the pharmaceutical industry and people know through psychology that people are going to buck against that. There's going to be the anomalies that do not follow the normal whatever. So you polarize them, right? Okay, then you say nutrition is the answer, right? And everybody thinks that this is so opposing from pharmaceutical companies. Did you know 80% to 90% of all uh, actual vitamin companies are owned by pharmaceutical companies. Oh my god! So most of that shit is owned by pharmaceutical companies. So they get you the other way. They actually control most of it. There are ones that aren't, but it's such a small percentage. So they literally own the whole thing, and everybody thinks that they're so the like, oh I don't follow this. I go over there. You're fucking. You're buying from the same pharmaceutical company that sells Pfizer. You know what the fuck? 
And so that's really important to understand. They're just like, I wouldn't say shell companies because it's not that in depth, but they have, you know, like subsidiaries and sister companies and things. So they don't use the actual name. Kind of like Monsanto, right? You know, you've been, everybody kind of knows that name now. Um, that it's a very, very bad and evil company that does a lot of the GMOs and uh, they used to be the ones that made Agent Orange. They were a poison company. Is that right? Yeah, they were the original ones that made Agent Orange. They specialized in poisons and then they started making our food. Oh my they God. never, before that point, they never did any genetic modification. They're just like, we are the masters of poison. Let's start making food. Yeah, that was smart. And so then they did that. But they got sued by so many people that the, like, they're like, we're going to need to do something. So guess who bought them out? Bayer. You know, people who make aspirin? Mm -hmm. They bought them out. They are Monsanto now. They continue. They've absorbed the company, and they continue to genetically modify food. Even though everybody's like, yeah, we beat Monsanto. No, you didn't. It's Bayer now. It's even bigger. Yeah, and so that's what I'm saying, is that li lots of people, by the illusion of not knowing that everything, that any system that exists is a controlled system. And I'm sorry to say that. It's just we have to find the outliers. But don't ever expect there to be something mainstream that has a lot of money behind it that has good intentions. Because it doesn't exist. He, he totally violated SEC laws a little while back ago by saying his company was going to get acquired. Then he said that it wouldn't get acquired. And the reason why he did that was because he had what were called um, – stock warrants, and this wasn't discussed in the media, but I went through their repo their annual report and I noticed this, but they had uh, convertible bonds that they issued and they like matured, they're gonna mature soon, and the company had to use uh, their cash flow to pay it off, but if the stock price went up above a certain threshold, then they could cash out their warrants in stock, and instead of, have, instead of the company having to dole out money which would really hurt their already precarious financial position they um didn't have to do that because they would just issue more shares and the investing public doesn't care because he's elon musk don't get me wrong i think the guy's brilliant and i think that he's doing a lot in terms of getting us to space i think that space exploration is really something that humans need to consider in the coming decades with population growth. Um, and with potentially a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's concerned, he has a genuine concern about climate change, which is something that I think is a major threat to um, humanity. Um, so he's doing a lot of good things. I mean, he's a good guy, and he's, incro and he's brilliant. I mean, that guy is so well-read, but, yeah, I think he has some personal issues there. Oh, come here, boy. So it's a boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, look. It's a boy wiener. It's a boy. As opposed to a girl wiener. The wiener has a wiener. No, it's I like realize. Five. I've never had a dog that can get boners. I've only had female dogs until now. That's Ooh. really exciting. Yeah. It's it's something <laughs> to look forward to. Yeah. I've never had a girlfriend that it's can get boners. It's something to look at. <laughs> Not yet, at least. I had a girl <laughs> Do what? No, I forgot I had a girl dog when I was little. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude, that's a little that's bit wild. Of there. Do you know that song "Lift Yourself" by Kanye? The one that's like scoopity poop poop. Yeah, poop. yeah. I heard that. The, I heard that the reason that he put that verse in <laughs> in that song was because Drake like called him up and was like. Hey, I think this beat's fucking sick, and I could use it. I could really use it, Kanye. Uh, he'll pro he was probably like, I could pay you this much money. I want to use this beat. And Kanye was like, fuck no. And then he like made that scoopity poop poop. He just like totally debauched it. But it's still like a great song. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I just wish I could sing it right now. I just like, everything like is going in and out. Of my brain, my brain skis. Your algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I have no not, response. Is that, is that like out there? This is what... Um, no, I mean, I... I it, yeah. It's so hard to quantify the progress of AI that it... Like, I, I don't rule anything out. I have no idea. Uh, yeah. I have no yeah. idea. It's so hard. It's just so hard to quantify it. 
Yeah, and, like, the more I learn, the more I learn that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, are you familiar with Yaval Harari? No. Uh, he is— Was it—you said Naval Harari? Y- Yaval. Yaval? Yeah. Oh, is that the author of Sapiens? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he has some good content on on AI, if you're interested in— What's his viewpoint? Oh, he thinks it's something that— He thinks that AI, climate change, and nuclear war are the three greatest threats to humanity. He sees it as a major existential threat to our existence. And that's the scary part about AI, at least in my eyes, is or one element of it is the fact that it could potentially be an arms race. I mean, it, it most likely is right now just Absolutely. because there's such an incentive for so many countries to get their hands on it first. Yeah, yeah. Vladimir Putin said um, the country that first develops AI will be the, will be the, the supreme ruler. That's wild. I'm very curious about the efforts being pumped into it and all the resources being pumped into it. Yeah. China is the only one that's really, from my understanding, they're the only one that's really taking it seriously. And China is not a country that is not at all a benevolent country. I mean, they they do some really messed up things. Like unethical? Oh, incre- incredibly unethical. Like what? Um, organ harvesting. They're, they're turning... Um, detaining millions of people against their will because they're not Confucius or atheist. Um, there's a large Muslim population in their in their West and they're not conforming to their you know um, you said they're not compor- conforming to Confucianism or, or atheism. Atheism's popular in China? Oh yeah, they're 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 like that's their I don't want to say official religion, but that's what Xi Jinping is is an atheist. I've never heard of a country predominantly being atheist. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That almost implies the entire country is nihilistic in some way. Um, Not that atheism implies nihilism, but it's definitely a uh, uh, a uh, a conclusion one can draw from atheism. Yeah. Um. That's that's what their government pushes on them, and that's what they have declared for themselves um as being uh they they don't like christianity they don't like islam um you know i'm i myself it depends on the day i guess would you say it's fair to say they don't like it or do they just simply disagree with it oh they don't like it they don't like any form of religion interesting so people were taking um something called uh what was that shit called? It's MMS, which is, uh, again, another one that's smeared, and they try to d- push it as a d- being bleach, but it's a constituent called sodium um, sodium chloride that is in bleach that when you mix it with citric acid, and you have to know like chemistry on this, what it does is it flips the molecule into something else to where it's an oxidized version of it that is not super toxic for the body, that human cells actually have resistance for it. Uh, but, like, people that don't know, they're like, that's bleach, people put bleach in their body, Uh, you know, whatever, but you get that into the cancer cell, and it fucking destroys it. Now, that does not work for certain cancers, but that works for skin cancer amazingly, and you know what? I mean, I'm not a doctor, I'm not anybody, like, this is subjective experience for entertainment only, like, they could come after me for just claiming that, if they really wanted to, if they thought I was important enough, just for saying that, I could be sued out my ass you know and that's what's fucked up just for saying something works yeah yeah but just 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 i'm not valuable enough i don't sell any products i'm not anything like that to Uh be a target so i can just voice that as what if you weren't getting any economic incentive to do so you were just stating general information if, if my voice was loud enough they'd come after me yeah wow yeah and that's the thing is they come after people for that kind of shit is because that's the biggest like money making industry. There was a doctor that said like, "Oh man," and this was a just a really popular, a really popular good doctor that said that. Why do you think we still use chemotherapy? He said, "Do you think we use it because it works?" He said that most doctors get anywhere from a five thousand to an eight thousand dollar kickback for every um, thing of chemotherapy that they sell, and it's one of the most expensive things that they sell. So. Not only that, but he said, well, why would we keep something that had a 92% failure rate? Oh, my goodness. 
He said that, okay, if Ford... With terrible side effects. Yeah, with terrible side effects. Is that, you look, okay. I don't, but then simultaneously, I think I'm like kind of a dummy. I think I'm limited. I think I'm really limited as a person. And it's like, how could I know anything? You know, I'm only one person in this massive world. How could I know anything? You know, I, th- I think I know things, and I think I have a decent grasp on particular topics, but for the most part, it's I'm still very, very, very limited. Oh, absolutely. In other people's opinions. But the problem I face is having, like, a pompous, arrogant, uh, like, perception of myself because I perceive myself to be intellectually superior than the general public. Yeah, and it closes your mind up in many ways because – then you're not able to learn and advance yourself on different topics. That's why nobody likes a smart ass. <laughs> yeah. Like shit like that happens a lot. I know. And it makes you well, that's why I mean that's why theories are created. Because there's some evidence behind it. But you it's know so saying? immeasurable. Yeah, but how do you measure that? Exactly. Like the, it's so spontaneous and so like uh it's like deja vu yeah almost like deja vu it's like like did you actually experience that in a dream or was that like meant to happen or like you know it's just like but you cannot measure that unless we create like some amazing breakthrough that does like the like the uh figs boton or whatever it's called that particle that like literally like extends dimensions um i've never heard of this yeah, th- there's, like, a particle that, like, either, like, extends into other dimensions or it, like, travels through time. I don't know which one. It might do both. The I don't know. Wait, what is it? The Figs? The Figs Boton. I'm going to watch a documentary on, on yeah. this after. On figs it, Boton? Yeah, it's called, like, the, I don't know. It's, like, the, the dimensional particle or something. And, uh, like, s- like hundreds of years ago, like, uh a philosopher like said like there is a molecule that can extend dimensions and it just depends on when we find it what and does that imply does that imply time travel does that imply what like what does going to another dimension imply uh imply as far as like the theoretical possibilities of the future well it means that like there is such a thing as a dimension just like ours but slightly different due to choices like each choice. Like another multiverse. Yeah, exactly. Like when you roll a die, you create six different dimensions off of that die. Because in one dimension, it rolls on one. In another dimension, it rolls on two. It's like that episode of Community, I don't know if you've seen it, where Abed's literally like, you're creating six different universes. And then it, in their universe, it stops like in the middle, like, like pointing upwards, like the seventh possible thing, you know? And it's like, each decision, you can make another decision that goes along with it. Which makes sense that there would be infinite. Because right now I could do yeah. an infinite amount of things. Yeah, like... And you could respond in an infinite amount of ways at infinite yeah. points in time. Exactly. Exactly. And it... Like, once you start thinking about it, like, actually thinking about it, like, it just makes sense that, like, there's multiple, like, dimensions of, like, how things go. And then, like those dimensions like there's a dimension that plays out just like it like just like it is right now but then i say something different next you know what i'm saying or you choose not to listen and or whatever yeah, whatever exactly like infinite like i decide to go and study for my test tomorrow instead to instead come here and just like, do the right, podcast bye. yeah exactly um but that that kind of that implies like agency and free will which is a really empowering thought that you, you have the free will and the agency in this world to be able to direct your universe wherever you want it to go through yeah. choices. And, I mean, that's, what's, that's what makes us a powerful thing because we do decide our own destiny. It's just it depends on the actions we take. You know, it just depends on the paths we're on. And, like – it kind of like puts a fault to predestination because if there's multiple di- uh, de- uh, multiple dimensions, then there's no such thing as predestination because everything has an implicit cause and effect. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, do you know what predestination is? 
uh, I mean, like like determinism kind of. Yeah, it's like. It's like it goes into religion and like I am like I I am religious I am a Christian, um, but one of the things is is if God knows all doesn't he kind of like map out our destinies, and like doesn't he kind of couldn't he like kind of like stop things from happening, um, and that's kind of like what predestination is is that like God has like mapped out our entire destiny and um, w- we were predestined to go to where we're gonna go. Mm. So I get Doritos. I go to check out, and he just looks at me. He goes, take it. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he goes, go. Have a good night. And so then I started, like, walking out with the Doritos, and he didn't fucking, like, he didn't stop me. No alarm went off. And we went back to the house with the Doritos. And I was like, holy shit. And so then Wait, I, why do you just give it to you? I don't get that. Dude. dude And so then, like, we went back there, and, like, I just started piling up shit in my arms. And, like, I just put it on the fucking table. Like, I had four bags of chips, like, some fucking uh, energy (laughs) drinks. Like, I had some Gatorade. Again, I'm high, so, like, I'm having a good fucking time. I had some candy, and he's like, have a good night. Nothing. 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 And then, and so then. Was this you just trying to get fired, do you think? Uh, that, no, that's my assumption. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure that was his fuck. last night there. No, b- because like, because, uh, and then I told like I posted in a, a group me and I was like, hey, yo, uh, d- free shit at come and go. You, you come <laughs> and you go. Like this is the one time. <laughs> this is the one time this thing is amply named. The adage is true. And, and so, uh, and then I just see people literally scarfing the shelves and just <laughs> running out of there. <laughs> and then, uh, sure enough. Uh, a friend of mine knew this guy and they're like oh yeah he got fired he was pissed because he had to work the late shift so he was just, <laughs> he, so he was just letting people go with free shit the whole night because he was pissed that he had to work late I in place of someone I thought you were going to say you didn't know how to work, work the register or some shit and he was like fuck it just go <laughs> <laughs> fuck it just go 